talking fishing, talking fishing, nothing but fishing, talking fishing. If it's facts about fishing that you wanna know, then tune in, folks, cause this is the show. We'll show you all the right bait to use. So sit right back, you got nothing to lose. Doesn't really matter if it's trout or cop, flathead marlin or a gummy shark. Listen to the guys and you can't go wrong. They'll be talking about fishing till the cows come home. Talking fishing, talking fishing, nothing but fishing, we're talking fishing. And welcome everyone to Talking Fishy. Massive show coming your way tonight. I tell you what, we're gonna have some fun tonight because we do have a couple of special guests in the studio. One of the things we're gonna do tonight is debate. If you ever had a scallop pie, you probably have in Tasmania, but probably not in Victoria. And we're gonna debate whether it's curry or mornay. Big show coming your way tonight. <laughs> People are gonna complain, boys. But our special guest tonight, one of them, Second one's coming up later on in the show, but the first special guest tonight, Dallas De Silva from the Victorian Fisheries Authority. No stranger to the show, Dal. Twice in a couple of months now. Thank you, Dave. Great to be here. We kept you off for six years. I oh, know. I don't think and, the last uh, time you're here, didn't we relegate you to the yeah, corner? I watched the replay of that today just to see if we was worthy of having back on. Yeah, yeah we're going to cancel up. No, 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 only joking. But you were. No, you were in the, we in the, crew, you were in the corner. Yeah, the COVID I was, corner. Yeah. I was in the bleachers. Yeah. yeah. Yep. You're on the yeah. full front oh. bar almost. Yeah. Yeah. I was there a lot. As, uh, as we were on the front bar this week. Mm, um, thank you. It's great yeah. to be here. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for coming in. Lots yeah. to chat about. Adam, what a perfect Easter we've just had. I can't remember weather as good ever for yeah. Easter as what we had the last one gone. And from what I saw through the shop and even experienced on the road, there was a few people up and about doing the holiday thing mm. everywhere. I don't think anywhere was safe this Easter, and nor should it have been with the weather. Charlie? You, did you yeah. paddle up a river? I did, and it was, the paddle up the river was okay. It was coming back into the wind and the tide that was a hard bit. <laughs> 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 Run a marathon? I feel like it, my legs are still sore. Well, there you yeah, go. I'm out of touch. Oh. Stephen Victor Trelfel. Yes. Uh, how was your Easter? Good. Yeah, yeah. I had a, had a great Easter. Yeah, we went up to a uh, little spot in the, uh, above the border and, uh, yeah. Had a, quite a nice time, but uh, unfortunately for most of the recreational users along the Murray, they dropped the guts out of the river and I don't think they could get their what? boats or their jet oh, skis really? in or, and you know, paddled in the mud. Why? Oh, I don't know, river management, I'll have to have a word to them. But um, uh. yeah, it was, was, was amazing. I was amazed to, to see the river so low, but the fishing was good. Yep. Uh, lots, of, lots of fish caught, um, like uh, Mole Whale, there was a lot of fish caught up there, a lot of monster cod and bits yeah. and pieces, so yeah, it's great. So places like Mole Whale, they keep the water level because it's, it's managed and there's a wall. Yeah, correct. But the, you're talking the river was dropped. Yeah, below right? that, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so they um, slowed, the, slowed the fire below it, yeah. So, yeah Don't but, care uh, about tourists? Apparently not. <laughs> Dal? <laughs> yes, Dal. Um, Fisheries has gone along pretty strong. We've had, we've had the minister, we've had Travis and Catherine in last week. Mm -hmm. um, there's just so much happening, and we're going to talk about a whole lot of stuff tonight with you, but... Um, one of the things, and, and we'll go into it a little bit further, Corner Inlet, mm. a lot of people um, went there over Easter, yep. and you went down there at Easter. I did. Describe the place. I mean, oh. it's how, how do you, it looks like a little little sleepy hollow, but yep. do lots of people go there? It's a little hidden gem. I think that's mm. the best way to describe it. You know, it's um, such a great whiting fishery, the gummy shark there, calamari. Yep. It's got everything, and um, yeah, it's such a great little spot, you know in South Gippsland, just on the other side of Wilson's Prom. Yeah, Amazing yeah. spot. If you haven't been there, get down there. Was the road into Wilson's Prom a bit like the Hume Highway or, you know, the it, it, Peninsula yeah, Link? Yeah, yeah, right. Right. It was. We drove down on Friday morning and, yeah, yeah through the, the traffic, you know, we had to stop a few times. And, they got yeah. there on Saturday afternoon. It was a good trip. Yeah. We're going to talk about Corner Inlet later on the show, but folks, let's have a look at what's been caught by the people at home. It's time for Catch of the Week. Catch of the Week, brought to you by Shimano. One of the things I think about King George Whiting is there's not a season anymore. Yeah. It's, it's an no. all-round fishery. and um, Since commercials are gone? Yeah. Well, well, it's a little, oh, I think there's been a little, little bit of everything. The yeah. Netters have been gone for six years now, yeah. most of them. But even with the Port Phillip side there's been change there i think that both systems are just healthy trolley they're just oh healthy. absolutely it has, yeah. Yeah. Has been yeah. yeah absolutely yeah. yeah so have a look at this mick james 45 centimeter pigeon pair from uh, joe's island 
in nice. Western Port. Okay. Mm. Well, deep water f- fish? They're yeah. good fish. They are. Good Solid fish. fish. Yeah, nice yeah, fish. Yeah. Um, another um, place that's been fishing really, really well is Tortoisehead Bank. Grant Day got out for first time in a long time with yeah. daughter Amy. Oh, it's Pity about the, the skipper, yeah. Jerry. Uh, <laughs> but <laughs> some cracking whiting there. Oh, what yeah. a size of... Th- yeah. Some Amy doesn't know chunky, how to catch small ones. Chunky whiting. And by the way, can I just say Amy, Dallas, is one of your women in wreck fishing yes. uh, network leaders and is on the show next week, live in the studio. Fantastic. What a, absolutely yeah, uh, nervous. No, she'll be yeah. fine. <laughs> no, we've got some tuna oil for her to drink. Yeah. No, <laughs> she'll be fine. <laughs> but yeah, Amy's joined us. But the size good. of those whiting. Yeah, how thick yeah, they were. I know. Yeah. 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 They're good. It's been a good year. Um, i tell you what, a lot of people fish for gummy shark over Easter. Yeah, they do. Like a lot of people. It's And, and it's not full moon. No. But it's, but it's like what you do yeah, during Easter, Easter yeah. isn't it? Is, is it? So have a look at this. young Two young boys, Blair and Blake, got out. Lovely gummy shark good off Coronella. Fish. Yep. Nice. Two young men. It's good eating. Doing it's a surprise really look on that shark. <laughs> <laughs> it's about to be flaked. Got four hands. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> um, over into Port Phillip, and I know we're just talking about gummies. You'll see a few more gummies later on, but... Have a look at that. You would think it is October. It's finally, finally. Seven point one kilos of snapper by Bruce Crook off Carum. That is a good looking snapper. Wow. But I've heard yeah. there's a few snapper kicking yeah. around at the moment. Yeah. Don't, yeah. Don't won't be the moment. only one. That's no, the last. That's this right. is the. Can I? Go on you, Bruce. An observation on the weekend. I had a great dive yesterday. Um, the water temperature is over 20 degrees in, in parts of Port Phillip Bay. We're out at Mud Island, 20.5 degrees. Mm. I think that's probably close to the warmest it's been yeah. for a year. Yeah. So that's here we are in April. April. Well, and the December. water temperature is yeah, pretty right. yeah. yeah, exactly. Well, that La Nina or whatever they call yeah, it. Yeah, Global that, warming. That yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to be 13 degrees this Sunday. Yeah, right? that's right. 13 degrees. <laughs> it's going to be freezing. Yeah, it's going to be global freezing. cold yeah, anyway, that day. We've got lots to talk about that yeah. sort of stuff, Trelly, mm. when we get to scallop pies, okay, I can go. tell you. <laughs> okay, uh, all right, let's keep going. Mud Island, here we go. Liz and John, have a look at this. King George Whiting. They're not bad. How... I know, you do quite a lot on the King George. You may have even been on that trip, Dave, I reckon. Oh, might have How would you rate this year's whiting season? Because it's felt like it's been one of the best we've had for a long time. Yeah, although I've struggled a little bit. But anyway, mm. found them at Mud Island. Nice. And um, that was in 1.2 metres of water. Yeah, that, yeah really? So 1.2? Been fishing, 2. Been fishing Absolutely. Deep, Dave, that's not your problem. Yeah, problem. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. The shallows of Mud Island are on fire at the moment. Mm. Nice. Mm-hmm. You'd be hitting Great. the bottom with your kayak oars, wouldn't you? That'd be <laughs> yeah, yeah no, I wouldn't be counting that far out, I tell you. I know it was a... Big swells yesterday and Sunday outside. Yeah. Not many people got out, but Friday, Saturday was superb. And uh, I know Sharkman Fishing Charters got out. Have a look at this. Hon with a southern bluefin tuna offshore from the rip. One of many yeah, corn over the weekend. weekend. Yeah. Dallas, that fishery. Mm. Yeah. On the doorstep of Melbourne, you know, four yeah. million people. It's yeah. so, so accessible, isn't it? Yeah. We were talking to Catherine last week. Um, just about the upgrade of Queenscliff boat ramp mm. because you'd have to say at this time of year, eighty percent of the boats are probably heading out on the on the tuna now. Yeah, yep. bigger boats. Mm. It, it desperately needs an upgrade, but that tuna fishery probably been there since December. Will we say mid mid December? Yeah, pretty People much. Yeah, for them. and it's been through a few yeah. little. Almost ups and downs. dominated the kingfish season. Yeah, mm-hmm. I reckon it did. I reckon it totally dominated the mako shark season. Yep. Like that's non yeah, almost yeah. non-existent. Yeah, I mean, people are just going for tuna. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And that fishery has lacked well, a little bit. That's that probably many. a conversation for yeah. another day. Especially around Apollo Bay, they'll probably have a tuna pie. Yeah. <laughs> you reckon they'll have a tuna pie? I reckon they could come up with one. Well, just so <laughs> happens that the owner yeah. of the Apollo Bay bakery is in the house. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Joining us very shortly. But anyway, uh, all right, let's keep going. Uh, Jason Kidd, lovely gummy shark offshore from Kilcunda. Great size gummies here. Yeah, yeah more flake. Yeah. More well, that's flight. just perfect table size. Isn't yeah, it? oh like, yeah, and they are the best. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Uh, and this one, well, well Dallas, Jace, if you venture down to Port Albert mm. and around that area, oh. you're going to get big ones. Have a look at this, Ben Barnes, twenty plus kilo of gummy. Oh wow. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Benny boy, that's look a gummy. That's a different, that's a a different class, here, isn't no. it? Oh, flake for plenty of flake there. Flake yeah. for yeah. Flake for days. Good fish. If you'd like to send in a pick of your catch of the week, this is what you have to do. If you want to be like me and have your photo on TV, email your fishing pic to info at ifish.com.au. Go boys! Yeah, I want to go fishing. 
I barrack for a new team, by the way, now. Grand for final. Collingwood <laughs> AFLW team. Grand final coming up for Chloe oh, on the weekend. Burn my Saints flag. Yeah. <laughs> uh, my Saints scarf, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, how good's Chloe Malloy? Yeah, dominating. I mean, uh, she's yeah. third year now, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, absolutely dominating. She's the ambassador for the VFA. Yes. Female yeah, female ambassador. She's just about to hoist the cup. And mm. grand final this weekend? This weekend. Versus, sure it is. versus Brisbane? Brisbane. Uh, what do they... No. Uh, no, it no, didn't... What do you get no, we beat Brisbane on the weekend. Then it's against Melbourne or North no, Melbourne. I, oh no, it is too. Melbourne. Melbourne. Where do they yeah. play? Where do they play? No, Melbourne here, of course. I've got no idea. Hmm. They played on the weekend at Victoria Park. Yeah. First final at Victoria where, Park. Yeah, I wonder where the final so, so that's in the message. Someone, MCG. Someone, get someone, on someone the will tell us. Someone yeah. can uh, get on our Facebook or yeah. text yeah. messages or whatever. Get where them on is the, big time. the Collingwood mm. AFLW team playing in the grand final this week? Coming up next, Fisheries News, including the names of the new artificial reefs in Port Phillip Bay. Next, I'm Talking Fishing. Talking Fishing. We know what you'd rather be doing. We know what you've really got in mind. We know you'd rather be out fishing. And today's the day you're gonna wear the line. Cause every day's a good day. Stop wishing. Every day's a chance to drift away. Drift away. Every day's a good day for fishing. See you down and tackle world today. Talking fishing, talking fishing, nothing but fishing, we're talking fishing. Live from the studios of Channel 31 Melbourne, it's now time for some very fishy news. All right, a bit of fisheries news coming up now. Uh, Dallas, help me out with some of these stories because mm-hmm. they're all related to you. We'll sure. Just make all it right. Uh, the headline is, uh, first major fish stocking for Lake Colac in 60 Seven years. Like, I didn't even know they kept the records that long. But anyway, <laughs> the Andrews Lo- Labor government is creating a new fishery in Lake Colac by stocking 10,000 catchable rainbow trout. Minister for Fishing and Boating Melissa Horn said the stocking is the first major one for the waterway since 1954. Uh, the fish will be stocked thanks to recreational fishing licence fees and the government's $35 million investment to get more people fishing more often in more places. The first truckload of 2,000 rainbow trout will be released on Wednesday 31st of March, which was last week, in time for the Easter long weekend, with the remaining 8,000 trout to be stocked in June. These rainbow trout are around 20 to 25 centimetres in length, 200 grams in weight, uh, meaning they are immediately catchable and will provide a productive and unique winter spring trout fishery for freshwater fishers at Lake Colac. Dal, hmm. why haven't you stocked it since 1954? What's going on there? Great work by Stop Taylor Hunt and the, and the team there. I think you know yeah. it's, it's, um, it's one of those waters that's always been sort of talked about uh, as a potential location for yeah. some, some more stocking. So, yeah, the freshwater team has gone out there and you know it made the front page of the Colac Herald. Believe as, it or not, as so, it would. You know, yeah. Well, and, they don't have um, scholar pies in town, so what else <laughs> yeah. are they going to talk not about? Yet, That's right. Not yeah. yet. Not yet. Yeah. Big paper. Yeah. yeah. So just yeah, really great news story for the for the wreck fishers down yeah. there, and you know, school holidays is now, so they're there. How ready big to is Lake Colac? It's a big body of water, but yeah. it's it's not very deep. So, yeah. Um, okay. You know, yeah. No rainbows yeah. or trout. Oh, uh, re- yeah. Or browns. Rainbows. Rainbows. Yeah. yeah, they're pretty active too. Like they yeah. get going pretty quick. Yeah, they'll fire up straight away. So ready to catch and enjoy. Yep. Bolac is Bolac further away or closer? Bolex Bolex a bit further. further. That was yeah. it, because that had that explosion year of those. Yeah, I think, mm-hmm. yeah, I think it's a bit dry now. Yeah, and then there was EPs in mm-hmm. it. That's got to be like nine or, or ten years ago. Yeah. A little mishap where they might put Bolex instead of Colac because it'd be closer. Took to it to the wrong place. <laughs> <laughs> no, definitely Colac this one. <laughs> <laughs> all right, this weekend's a big weekend. It all starts, even though it's going to be 13 degrees on Sunday. <laughs> uh, but let's talk about what's going on. The headline is Vic Fish Kids Free Clinics this school holidays. The Andrews Labor government is excited to relaunch Vic Fish Kids just in time for the Easter school holidays. Three free Vic Kids Ki- Vic Fish Kids events will be held across the state these, these school holidays. Uh, the f- these fun and free events will be held in Turidan, Torquay and Shepparton Trelly. The Shepparton event will coincide with the Murray Codference, which is also being held that weekend. The events are running collaboration with local fishing clubs, giving budding juniors a chance to learn from experienced fishers such as Trelly. Yep, Shaw's going to be there. We'll talk about that in a sec. Yep. About how to catch a new hobby and reel in their first fish. There will be 21 clinics run 
over the three events, each an hour long to allow children across the state to learn more about fishing. Turidan is the first event. It's on this Sunday, April the 11th. Uh, Torquay is on Tuesday, the April, April the 13th, which is next Tuesday. And Shepparton on the following Saturday, April the 17th. Clinics running 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. You need to register. I think it's up on the screen now. Uh, vfa.vic.gov.au, Vic Fish Kids. Trelly, that's going to be a great event in Shepparton. Yeah, that'll be really good. It goes from, I think, 10 to uh, 4 o'clock. Yep. Yeah. And, yeah, we're going to teach kids how to tie a few knots and drive their mum and dad nuts. Yep. No, no, it's good. Do they put the, the, they put the little kids, net yeah. out at, there to guarantee a fish, or do they just put them all on the... On the no, it's just in the lake the itself. The lake, yep. lake's been stocked heavily, so yeah, cool. uh, it'll be a great spot to start. And, and Dallas... Oh, Adam, you know Turidan pretty well, actually. Yes. Turidan. Mm. That'll be on the inlet side this yep. Sunday. It'll be cold. It'll be wet. Yeah, the fishing will be. But it's still a great town. Cool. It is, and it's oh, it's awesome. You got yeah. a little, you got mm. a little strip of shops that backs basically right onto it. They've built yep. some fairly new platforms there. There's heaps of access, heaps of space. It doesn't matter how many kids mm. turn up. Mm. What sort of species would they expect? Brim, estuary perch, mm. uh, bay trout, carp. No, no, no carp. Good no. stuff. The odd fl- the odd flat. Yeah. Maybe, yeah. Tidal, maybe, maybe a luge, very tidal, yeah. but not oh, okay. because it, because tidal. it is sheltered with that with the wall that sort of separates it from mm. Western Port itself. Yeah. It's not too bad. It's it's pretty fishable all the way through. Yep. Uh, there'll be mullet. It'll be good. It, mm. It'll be really good. Yeah. Ooh. All right, that's good. So this weekend, but you must register. Don't forget, get onto that website, Vic Fish Kids, uh, and register. Um, Dallas, some remarkable progress being seen up at the new native fish hatchery. This is exciting. I think it was only about four weeks ago, Trolley, we announced, or the minister was in the house, yeah. and, we, and, and we announced that the earthworks were about to start. Yep. Let's have a look at some photos of what's going on now. And uh, they're 50% done with the yeah. earthworks. Mm. Del, how does this? Great work by Anthony Forster. You know, he's been just, yeah, full bottle on the hatchery the last little while. And yeah, he's done a terrific job working with the contractors and all the you know behind the scenes work that's needed um, to build these these ponds and, and also Steve Vidler who's provided some terrific advice as well and input along the way so yeah it's really exciting to see it come along so quick. You been I'll, out there Trelly? Yeah, uh, uh, yeah. I, not while the earthworks is going but they yeah. had yeah, they'll probably put it back a little bit because we had a week of rain too so mm. it's probably would be a week or two down the track from where it is now, but yeah. but yeah, no, fantastic. I mean, the, the design, the whole lot, and the guys what to put in it's been. But it showed the the clay soil there and how well that holds the water with yeah. the rain that we had. You know, Correct. so it's, yeah. a, it's a mm. perfect site, and they've yeah. done so much work in the mm. planning and you know the de- design phase. Yeah, so it's uh, yeah, it's great news. I, I heard, and I, I mean, not sh- doesn't show in there, but like when they drain a pond of the small fish, yep. the truck will actually drive. Underground Under. a little bit, yeah, and, and and so there's no netting of the fish. It's they're actually not handled at all. You had to be able to drain them oh, out of the right. pond into they, the truck. That's I pretty think, cool. I think something like Dallas, that. Anyway. I think they eliminate like three handling of fish in a new design rather than mm. the old design, don't yeah. they? So yep. handling fish three times gets cut out. That's right. Mm. For the new design, state which is of the art. And you look at Snob Street that's seventy, probably seventy-seven years old or, or yep. something like that it's now. Still dominating, yeah. by the way. Oh yeah, mm. at yeah. record levels. Mm. Yeah, great news. Yeah. All right. Um, another great announcement that occurred last Thursday on the foreshore of uh, Cryo Bay was the naming of the new artificial reefs all in uh, Cryo Bay. And just a great celebration, Dallas. Mm. I know very well organised mm. event by the VFA, professionally organised. Yep. Um, and yeah, we had the minister there. You know, beautiful yeah. weather, wasn't it? It was a stunning spot. Well, I said Merv Maguire probably organised that. Mm. And let me just, if I can quickly chat. I mean, we've got some photos in a minute. We won't put them quite up yet. But for those of you that didn't know Merv Maguire or, or heard of Merv, Merv was, um, he worked for the Rex Hunt fishing show for about 10 years, working alongside Rex uh, in advertising on that program. He then became the inaugural CEO of the Rex Hunt Future Fish Foundation and held that position for around about 10 years. He did a short stint with VRFish mm-hmm. as the CEO there. Did. And he also chaired the inaugural, what they call the Recreational Fishing Round Table, which was a, a group of people set up to, uh, uh, probably the easiest way to describe it is to give some other bodies, mm. you know, like the Australian Trout Foundation, Native mm-hmm. Fish Australia, Future Fish and all those 
other bodies, some direct access to the head of fisheries, mm -hmm. um, direct access probably to the minister, yeah. you know, and that, and that sort of thing. And really a, a, mm. a really good um, a, a communication body. Mm. Merv started it yeah. mm. and Merv chaired it for 10 years. And, and mm. so you look at that, you know, 30 years of, of in entertainment and actually getting some things done for fishing, you know. Yeah, it's fantastic. So mm. one, of the, one of the reefs was called Merv's Reef. Merv's Reef. We've got some photos up here. Um, we'll show you. That's the three, uh, I, I guess, people for the three reefs. Jeff Wilson on the right. Now, we, we had Jeff on this show six years ago. Season one. He has, yeah. an, he has an age one a little bit. He still looks yeah. 95, but anyway. <laughs> um, but there's, there's Wilson's Reef. And there he is, so proud with the minister. I mean, he was absolutely stoked. And a rare occasion because he's... he's uh, Still alive. A, yeah, he's still alive. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to say it a nice way. So, but I must say um, that Merv Maguire's <laughs> wife, Pauline, and daughter, Christy, there with the minister and Travis, it was just absolutely fantastic to have Pauline and Christy down there for that event. And um, yeah, it was quite emotional because yeah, it would be. Merv yeah, passed absolutely. away during COVID. Mm. And, uh, you know, he really couldn't have visitors mm. when he was um, yeah. struck down with cancer. Yeah. And, um, you know, and, and, and only restricted people to the family. You know, mm. well, not even the whole family could yeah. attend the funeral, mm. let alone colleagues, you know. And so, um, to me, it was a, a fitting farewell, but yeah. also a, a, a nice way to honour yeah. 30 years of work in fishing for Merv Maguire. So, oh, um, the yeah, yeah, so very nice. nice and Merv's Reef is the one that... Um, mm. Sorry, um, that you can cast from the shore. Oh, yeah, nice. What was the other one? North shore. Two, oh, it? and Moolap, which is um, an indigenous mm. name for, I've got it all in, uh, 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 um, is the indigenous name of Point Henry. Oh, nice. And that reefs off Point okay. Henry. So um, that was, that was well we? received as well. There was, a, there was all that. Was it? Was, yeah, no, it was okay. very good. Um, all those GPS marks, by the way, can be found up on... Uh, we had the webs website up there, vfa.vic.gov.au forward slash rocky reefs. Um, so there you go. That was, that was, yeah. a, it was a great event. Really yeah. good event. So. Very good. All right. Got to go to a break. Now we're getting to the serious stuff. Coming up next, product of the week. It's something really different and hopefully really tasty. Next on Talking Fishing. Talking Fishing. Talking fishing, nothing but fishing, we're talking fishing. I think this is about to be the greatest product of the week we've ever done. And as you can see by the little thingy on the screen there, we are going to talk about scallop pies. And for those that don't know, there's a revolution going on. There really has. For those of you that tune in to Talk Fishing on 3MP, and also follow us here on Talk Fishing on Channel 31, we have started, we have the call, they've put the call out. David, I think you bought this up on radio first and yeah. then it made its way to TV. We've been calling out for scallop pies. We're not prepared to sit back and let Tasmania take the lead on this. We think we have possibly found the greatest scallop pies on earth here in Victoria. But we want more though, Ads, don't forget, because you've got the media release in front of you. Yeah, the, well... The quota is increasing from what... You've got it in front of you. Oh, it's <laughs> <laughs> from, from, from just about nothing to, to uh, like 900 to ton tons. Yeah. So, there's, listen, we've found a few scallops. All the fine folk at the VFA, along with a few fishermen, have found the mother load of scallops. Yep. They're Victorian scallops, is that right, mm -hmm. Dale? Correct. And you're about to see Gipsling. just the biggest explosion of scallop. Yep. But don't bother because we've found the best. Sitting next to me here is Sally Cannon from the Apollo Bay Bakery who make the greatest scallop pie on earth. Thank you, Adam. Now, please run us through these because there's two different sorts here and there's heated debate going on amongst yeah. the crew. We have scallop pie and Mornay sauce. So there's two That's to choose. That's the only way, isn't it? 
No, the first what? one. <laughs> well, this is this is where the debate starts. <laughs> so we first started making the scallop pie probably about ten years ago when we took over the bakery and yep. we started with the curry. So it's a Ooh, curry leek. Okay. Curry. Okay. So, curry. So it's okay. A, hang on. So curry's the original. Curry's the original. Oh, I don't know. Which, which one? Yeah, which one's which? <laughs> curry's got the little Blasphemous. the little flour on it. Yeah, that's the curry. Here, Charlie, yeah. you get stuck into those while we yeah. talk about what's going on. You talk about it. As we we'll get into it. Okay, so, so we've the got the start. That was so the yeah. curry and leek is the original mm -hmm. scallop pie. Okay. Yep. So how long after that did the Mornay follow? Uh, it was probably a couple of years. We we started with a fish Mornay pie uh, yep. with a bit of Atlantic salmon and rockling, and then we had the brilliant idea to to make a scallop Mornay pie as well. So now we've got the two to choose from. Okay. So, so this day and age, Rockling what's leading the charge through the bakery? I think the Mornay in the bakery has just got a slight advantage. Okay. Your personal favourite? The curry. Dal? Oh, really? Now, Dal, I think you were the you were oh. the one that actually answered the call first, saying Apollo. Oh, on, th on. on 3 MP. Three That's and right. That day That's on 3 right. MP. So what, what's your favourite? Well, my Sri Lankan heritage uh, would you know, <laughs> lean me towards the curry pie as well. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh. Be, they come with a shirt alert. They can be juicy, but, so be very careful. Now, the, thing <laughs> is, the thing I heard about scallop pies, sure yeah. well, <laughs> Sally, if you can correct me here, if you don't burn your tongue, it's not hot enough. Is that right? That's correct. You've got to burn your tongue. They're going to burn my tongue on this. I'd, 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 well, you probably should use the fork. <laughs> now, I, I, yeah, I okay. must say straight up, what well, Trelly's mm. elegantly cutting into those next well, to me. I'll one. I tell you what, that I think the curry one wins in the smell department. The aroma mm. coming out of that bite. Can, can, I, I, can I also just point out, we've had tongue. to heat them up in the microwave, so they probably oh. wouldn't normally look that soggy. No, that's so, no, that one looks like there's too much carrot in it. Sally, you told the story. So I was tell the story. I was telling yeah, the, I was telling the guys at dinner that uh, we had a customer once that complained that there was too much yep. carrot in his scallop pie. Oh, I said, we yeah, don't yeah, well. put carrot in the scallop pie. I was going to say, did you, did you politely tell him it's not carrot, it's the, it's the greatest scallop pie of all time. That's we right. use the row and everything. That's exactly right. Yeah. Yeah. No, but he was, um, he was a seafood expert. Then. Oh, there you go. Yeah. All right, I'm going to give the curry. I'm going to give it 9 out of 10, all right? But <laughs> Dalda, have, have you had the curry? I haven't had the curry. I, no. I haven't licked that bit, so yeah, you can find some of that one. Have you had the curry one? Um, oh, these are real scallops. Do the curry one They're second. whole scallops, yes. Uh, there's between oh, six and eight oh, scallops in every pie. Yeah. Really? Yeah, so, yeah. So we it's don't not what you get in Kmart. Mm. You know, <laughs> one and a, it's a, it's a so plastic. So they're chock a block full of scallops, that's oh, for so sure. I saw, yeah, I saw a little sneak peek of the, mm. the baking process. I'm going to show that later on. Oh, yeah, it's not just a single scallop per pie. Any second now they're going to yield. There's more scallops than pie. Can I, this is okay. This is the, the mornay. So the mornay's got a, a nice bit of cheese, a bit yeah. of mustard, and a little bit of dill as well. Can I, can I ask you what Taste sort of the cheese you use? <laughs> oh, is that given no, no, we just use cheddar. Cheddar, yeah. cheddar. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Not coon. That's good. No. That's not called that. Not, anymore, not the good. Oh, sorry. Gruyere. Mm. Oh. Uh, What's it called now? <laughs> Better. Like very hot. <laughs> They're very oh, hot. Cheese oh. <laughs> won't work. Tell me how to talk. <laughs> So we've been, yeah, we we uh, we do sell a lot of these scallop pies at, at the bakery. They're, yeah, we're how the home of the scallop pie on the Great Ocean Road. Yeah, how many scallops in a kilo? Hmm. Ooh, that's a very good question. Well, it's only related back to then give ask Dallas yeah. how much these nine hundred thousand tons of scallops. <laughs> how many scallops? <laughs> how many pies? No. I reckon. Hey, you used a seventy kilos to make how many pies? You're saying? So I reckon there's. It was about 800 grams in yes, each. Yes, it's about 800 grams worth of scallop meat yeah, yeah, to 100 grams in each. Yeah, yeah that's We're, right. we're going to yeah. talk about it in more detail very shortly. I've got a controversial call on the better one, by the way. Okay, all right. Well, yeah, Travis you, you won't like that because I know a, he's a fan of the Mornay. You can't have the curry one first because it, the power overrides the Mornay. Yeah, but the Mornay agree. first. It's, it's a curry powder too, so it's quite mild. Yes. It enhances the flavour of the scallop. Yeah. It sort of doesn't yeah. overpower it too much. That's what we think. Not with them Pakistanis. I'm going to... I'm going to reserve my judgment on the Mornay versus the curry. I've got, I've got a clear winner in my mind. Yeah. Um, Dale. I can't wait to hear Travis isn't going to like us because no, no. he gave us strict instructions. Mm. But anyway, um, while we enjoy this mm. delicacy oh. of <laughs> Apollo Bay bakery scallop pies, which are just sensational, Sally, uh, we're going to come back and talk about how you make them, how many you make a day and all that sort of stuff. But we must go to Cara in the kitchen. She's not cooking scallop pies, but a beautiful <laughs> snapper parcel. Let's have a look at that while we get into this. Tonight's recipe, I'm featuring some lovely local fresh snapper fillets. I'm going to turn them into a creamy snapper filet parcel. There are a few steps in tonight's dish. So to prepare our ingredients, the snapper fillets I have de-skinned and cubed into about three centimetre pieces. 
roughly chopped a leek. And with the dill here, I've just removed the leaves from the stalks and we're just going to roughly chop those as well. Now, our next step is to make a white sauce, which is going to be the creamy component of our parcels. To make our white sauce, we need to make a roux. So this is done by melting in some butter and whisking in flour. We will leave this to cook for one minute for the flour taste to cook out. Once we've got that beautiful crumb consistency, we are now going to add in some milk and whisk this till it's well combined. This is going to thicken up and create the beautiful creamy sauce. For some flavour, we will add salt and pepper and some Dijon mustard. So that's our creamy sauce done. We'll pop this aside and move on to our next step. Into a hot pan with a little bit of olive oil, I'm going to add our leek. And we'll let those cook through till they're nice and soft. Add in some fresh dill. I've removed our dill and leek and into the same pan, splash of oil. And we're just going to lightly fry off our snapper. We're not wanting to completely cook through the snapper, just to brown it and give it a little bit of colour. So into our white sauce mix, I'll add the snapper and we'll stir through our leek and dill. This is now our filling. And all that's left to do is pop them into their little phyllo pastry. I'm using five layers of our phyllo pastry and every second layer we'll just give a light brush with some butter. This is going to make the pastry lovely and crispy and helps them all stick together as well. Now I'm going to cut this one in half and this is going to make two parcels. This one to the side. Now in the centre we're going to place a generous spoonful of our snapper mix and we want to leave a little gap at the top and the bottom for folding. So we'll lift up the base first, bring the top over and then we'll make two folds and two turns to tuck our little parcel in. So just a light layer of butter and they're going to go into a hot oven of 200 degrees and we'll bake those for 25 to 30 minutes. Well, don't these just look sensational? They smell amazing too. Crunchy, creamy snapper parcels. Mm, we're back. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm going to go the curry. Yeah, yeah I, I would agree. I mean, they're both beautiful. They're both good. But um, I've upgraded from a 9 out of 10 to a 10 out of 10. Uh, more for than both, eight. but I've got to say the curry. Oh, yeah, I think I'd lean in the curry direction. I've said a lot of people. But anyway, <laughs> coming up the next, morning. Kramer's Mailbag, and we chat some more with Sally and Dallas about scallop pies and Apollo. I think I'm spitting it everywhere. Mm -hmm. And Apollo Bay, next on Talking Fishing. Talking Fishing. G'day. Callan here from Paul Worsland's Tackle World Cramming. Supercharged batteries have been supplying maintenance-free marine batteries since 2001. The Seamaster Gold Range is second to none, delivering superior starting power and reserve capacity. No need to top up with water, truly a fit and forget battery. With up to two years replacement warranty, you know you have quality. Your battery is your lifeline. Without it, you're dead in the water because it's bloody hard to push start. I've got a Seamaster battery in my boat. Make yours a Seamaster Gold today. Welcome back to Talking Fishing, joined in the studio tonight by Dallas De Silva from the Victorian Fisheries Authority and Sally Cannon from the Apollo Bay Bakery, home of the home of the scallop pie on the Great Ocean Road. Even made, you've even made a hat, Sally. Like, yeah. How good's that? That's how good home the of the are. famous scallop pie. If you'd have asked us two weeks ago, 
we only thought scallop pies were in Tasmania. Mm. A lot of people do, mm. and a lot of people come into the shop and they always tell us that they've been to, you know, they've had them in Tasmania. Yeah. And I always say, well, we're just saving you the airfare now. You yeah. can just come down the Great Ocean Road, yeah. have a beautiful day trip down there, and there come and go. have a scallop pie. I, I, I've, I know, you know, when you talk about something, Mr. Apple knows, and he and you start getting ads in your yeah. social. <laughs> and there was Apple some does. some bakery advertising. Get your Tasmanian scallop pies here. That's terrible. No, yeah. We want Victorian pies. But anyway, we've got, we got a little bit of mailbag just to get through. Um, oh, this is from. This is. Oh, it's, I shouldn't have had so much Chinese for tea, let alone a scallop pie. Um, this first one's from Sharon. Shaz. Shazza, yeah. Shazza. Boat ramps around Lake Yield and especially Jerusalem Creek are, a ma this is re in reference to last week, are a major problem and has been for over 30 years. It's getting even worse now with the cod fishermen visiting the lake. The ramps are not big enough, minimum car parking areas. What the major problem also is new boat owners loading and unloading personal belongings, etc., at the end of the ramp instead of preparing beforehand. Oh, the queuing up can stretch for easier kilometre during peak season. Do you go there? Yeah, it's annoying when people do that. Do you know what you know Liz that works in our office? Mm -hmm. This is this is how ridiculous some people are. Liz and Rob yeah. went to Warney to have a whiting fish on the weekend. Mm. A boat backed down, right? Got ready, didn't quite hit the water, got ready. And they went to the back of the boat and undid the bungs. She thinks it's probably been sitting in their backyard for six months, and over ten minutes it drained the water really? out of the yeah, so they the boat was full of water. Yeah. They've mm. driven to the ramp with a bung in and then undone it to get all the water out. Ten minutes she sat there, the queue's a kilometre long at Warnie. Yeah. Oh. She said she's never seen anything. They would have been the most popular Liz, people. Yeah. Liz isn't an angry person, but she was going to kill someone <laughs> that day. And, uh, so anyway, thanks for that. <laughs> Nothing we can do about Eon. Um, Greg, hey guys, great show. Love what you're doing for fishing. Well done. Avalon Boat Ramp is one of the ramps uh, I wish you had discussed with Catherine as Avalon Ramp Catherine will be watching, don't you worry about that. Avalon Ramp is a ramp in need of an upgrade to the total area of the ramp. The car park, jetty, cleaning, boat and fish, dredging or extending the jetty. Hopefully you can pass this on. We will do that. Um, oh, and old mate, we always get one of these every year, don't we? Old oh, mate one. Yeah, um, Phil, Phil Funky, he writes. Phil, fun uh, Phil Funky. <laughs> Dear Kramer and the gang, fantastic show. How do I dispose of my old expired flares? Thank oh, you kindly from give Phil. Give me. Yeah. No, well, is the soccer back with crowds? <laughs> ah, yeah, that's right. Oh, no, no, you're not allowed to do that either. No, yeah. Drop me to Geelong or Laverne and Trellies. Yeah, Tackle World. Uh, oh, no, uh, just yeah, Trellies, Geelong yeah. and Laverne. I'll give it for you. The official line is um, Fire Brigade or the Coast Guard. Yeah, or Lock the Gate. No one can get to you when you're not right. <laughs> anyway, uh, if you'd like to write into Kramer's Mailbag, this is what you do. Send your mail to Kramer's Mailbag, P.O. Box 734, Patterson Lakes, Victoria 3197 or email kramer at ibish.com.au. Now, I'm going to get into these again, Sally, mm -hmm. but tell us a bit about scallop pies. Um, how do you make them? Well... When we first took over the bakery, we, we had the idea of making them because our nan used to make a dish of curried scallops. And of mm. course, I knew they were popular in Tasmania. So yeah. I, I thought, well, why don't we have a go at it and see how we go? Mm. So I think the first time we made them, we, we put four, four in the display oven and threw three out at the end of the day. Yeah. So, but gradually, you know, they became really popular. And now we're just, you know, we're making them three, four, five times a week at the moment. Um, obviously, during COVID, they weren't as popular. Mm. But, um, you know, we've got, uh, we've got a bakehouse up the back of our bakery. We've got our pie guys up there working basically around the clock, uh, making all of our delicious pies. But the, the scallop pies are, are, are probably one of our most popular yeah. pies. When, so. when we first got into this, like I said before, we said that only Tasmania had scallop mm. pies. We put the call out, mm -hmm. what, a week ago? Yeah, yeah he, 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 two weeks ago. Yeah, here's yeah. a map. Here's mm. a map so far of where you can get scallop <laughs> yeah. pies in Victoria. There you go. So that's what, that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Not up in the Murray, but yeah. No, no, no. Yeah. But we're told Yarragon potentially. We need names. People need to send this into us. Social media will do. Um, Yarragon, we think. Yep. Yes. Cows, yep. we yep. think. Yeah, yep. cows was it? Yep. New Haven was it? That no, we've got New Havens on the map. But cows isn't fluent. We need some details of where to get them in cows. But I know we're giving away to the opposition. But That's okay. I think. Yeah, yeah, do, but do you reckon? Did I hear correctly that yours have been written about in the New York Times? 
Absolutely, David. What? Just, just, oh, just, just what? Yeah. We've gone global. Yeah. <laughs> so just recently, uh, one of the journalists from the New York Times that was uh, working from home in Australia, she, mm. she came in and had a bit of a chat to us about uh, tourism, how it's been affected in Apollo mm. Bay uh, with, um, with the internationals no longer coming down. And we got talking, obviously, about the scallop pie. And we did have Chinese writing on our window advertising the scallop pie during mm. uh, you know, pre-COVID, but we removed that when um, they cancelled all the flights and, and she was asking me all about that and how the how the tourism has been impacted um, with the, the internationals no mm. longer coming down. So so there was this big article in the New York Times all about towns like Apollo Bay that have been severely you know affected by the, the tourists, like a lot of other towns too, I, I guess. But mm. um, yeah, and the, and the scallop pie got a mention in the New York Times, which was fantastic. Ooh. Wow. Mm. Have a look at this photo here of... This is today, isn't it? I took it? that this morning, yep. <laughs> How many pies do you make a day? That is a, a mix. There's 315 scallop pies there, and we probably do that four or five times a week at the moment. What? Wow. Yeah. Look at that. Yep. And there's between six to eight Bass Strait scallops at the moment in those pies, so yep. but it's obviously now but after talking to Dallas and yourselves that uh, that could be all about to change. Wow. And you make the own, your own sauce? Yes, so the, the curry, we do a curry leek, so it's a mild curry as, you, as you've been tasting, mm -hmm. so it's a curry powder, so it's not too overpowering, mm. and, um, and it really enhances the flavour of the scallops, and then we do a mornay, which is the, the cheesy sauce as well. Have you got any new ones coming up? We have, we've got a, we've got an, um, a couple of other seafood mm. selections, we've got a really nice garlic prawn pie, oh, which is nice wow. creamy yeah. paprika sauce, and yeah. we've got a seafood pie, which is the, the mornay sauce, the same as the scallop sauce, the, yeah. And, yeah. Um, and we've all also got oh, we did a lobster thermidor pie over yeah. the Apollo Bay Seafood Festival, yeah. which yeah. happens every uh, every, every February. Some yeah, we've got a gluten free curried scallop pie yeah. as well. For those what? people called all those funny names. <laughs> well, how do you how do you know if you if you're gluten free? Oh, you get this funny twitch in your eye and start doing <laughs> circles on the floor and dragging your bum. You don't know what you do. You get side effects. <laughs> <laughs> Do the bed again. Side effects. When we rehearsed that line, it was, it was quite a different <laughs> answer. It's all as 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 about kids' names on yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> that'll do trouble. No, that'll do trouble. Yeah. No, stop, stop, no. stop while you're ahead, mate. So, yeah, I've got to say, now, I just had a bit more Mornay, Dallas. Mm. And I've... The, the more You can eat more Mornay than curry, I reckon. What are you... What, are you still are you a Mornay? Are you changing your answer? Yeah, I'm going to go around now. Yeah. We're gonna I'm going to give the Mornay now... I'm going to give that a 9.8... And I'm going to give the curry a 9.6. Dale? Dave, I can't split them. I've probably just leaned still with the curry pie, but they're both fantastic. Yeah, All I'm right. sticking with the curry pie. You're going curry. Rating? Yeah. Can you rate them at a well, 10? Well, I you could. Got much left. You guys have done a no, right. I, yeah, <laughs> I could. Yeah. But you, you left you your gotta, curry. You've got to understand, though, we've just eaten these out of the microwave. Yeah, I know. Imagine these Imagine fresh out real. of the oven with the yeah, I know. crispiness. Yeah, yeah. I, went the, I went the Mornay because I reckon curry just... Yeah, I'm not a curry person. <laughs> Couldn't have told that. <laughs> Sally, cast yeah, vote good. here. It is good. Curry is Mornay good. Mornay or curry? I've always said the curry. I think really? the curry is delicious. It's yep. the original, Dave. It's the original. Dave. Okay, so out of 315 pies that you make a day, how many are curry and how many are Mornay? To be perfectly honest, uh, there's more Mornay than curry. So I think there's about eight... Eight pallets of Mornay and seven of curry. So yes. just a little, they just, the oh, Mornay. Like Mornay just, yeah. 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 All right, our challenge is, um, can I have that media release? Ash? Curry munches. Sure. Let me just, I want to read Curvy those, pie. those real numbers. Um, because the real numbers are the Gippsland, um, that, you know, they found all the, found all these scallops at Gippsland. Mm -hmm. And the total allowable catch now is going from 135 tonnes per year to 979 tonnes per year. And we want to see scallop pies in every bakery. So what we want you to do, people at home, we want you to go into your bakery this weekend and ask for a scallop pie. All right, when they say, we don't have scallop pies, you've got to go to Tasmania, you say, Bulldust, I've seen the, the map. Yeah, that's right. right. I've seen the map. And uh, we want scallop pies in a lot more bakeries in Victoria. And what we don't want is the ridiculous advertising in Victoria of we have Tasmanian scallop pies That's because it. there are 979 tonnes of Victorian scallops mm. that we want to see in the pies. Are you really going to meet with 4 and 20? We are. We're talking today. <laughs> today I spoke to two, no! commercial, <laughs> two, two commercial scallop fishers in Lake Centres yep. who love this and also Brad Duncan from the Co-op at Lakes. Yep. 
They're all on board. There's going to be scallop pies everywhere, Dave. Yeah, all right, we want, to, we want to see that map got grow. got room for 1.1 million pies, where they yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Get into your bakery this weekend and ask for a scallop pie, and when they say we don't sell them, tell them they have to. Uh, coming up next, the all-important hot spots. We've got a little bit more conversation about scallop pies next on Talking Fishing. Talking Fishing. The Bo Morris Motor Yacht Squadron is a trailer boat and social club on Port Phillip Bay. The club has a great range of facilities, including multiple boat ramps, ample car and trailer parking, boat wash and fish cleaning, fishing competitions and boat safety lectures, boating activities and club events, a restaurant and two bars. Easy launch and retrieval makes for a relaxing time on the water for you, your family and friends to enjoy. And boating memberships are now available. The Bo Morris Motor Yacht Squadron, the best trailer boat experience on the bay. Now the segment you've all been waiting for, Fishing Hotspots. Brought to you by the Bo Morris Motor Yacht Squadron, Melbourne's premier trailer boat club. Now, just before hotspots, apologies. We had actually no idea what was going on in the AFLW. I don't follow football because I've had enough. <laughs> or the same or really had the <laughs> but I follow Malloy. So anyway, apologies. So the 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 is it, what is it? The quarterfinal, I think. Lions, the Collingwood, yeah, in, in the and, Gabba, uh, and then Adelaide and Adelaide, Adelaide and Melbourne. Adelaide. Winner of those two, which will probably be Melbourne and Collingwood, play off in the grand final grand the following final. week. How good would that be? But the Chloe Malloy is on fire. I know that, and she's in our little thing there. And um, after what is it? After oh, after catch of the week, Malloy. Yep. Next time she's on the boat, I'm going to push her over. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I hate Collingwood as well. I'll hold the Premiership Cup. All right, uh, <laughs> hotspot. Sorry. Um, all right, how's this one? Can I just say, I, I've, I've spoken a little bit about garfish. Yes. Being absolutely mm. sensational. There is a lot of garfish in the bay. Like last year, we're going to see, I think, a great winter for garfish. Yep. Keeps everyone going. But there's a little group, right? Oh, this and, is awesome. And, it, and, and it, if you can do this, go and tap them on the shoulder and just have a look in their bucket. They'll, and just say you saw it on Talking Fishing. If you go down Blair Gowry Pier, you only go about 80 metres down, which is less than halfway. Because it's a long pier. It's a bit... It's a, yeah. It'd be, what, 200 and... It's a bit, 250 yeah, it's metres a long yeah. pier. You go about 80 metres down, yep. and it, instead of it only being one foot deep, there's a gutter that's two foot deep, right? Yep. And it's, it's this gutter. You can, And in that gutter is the most magnificent school of garfish, and they've been there for weeks. And... The guys get there, they got their little spoons, they flick their burly out, yeah. and they got their floats. Yeah, yeah. If you want a garfish, get down there. You'll see the little gutter, construct about 80 Ooh. metres down. Yeah, it's it doesn't look like anything, no, no. but it's there. Or the Vic Market. Or you can go to the Vic Market, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, uh, the next one, Big South Wesley's coming this weekend. Um, like I said, 13 degrees, I think, on Sunday. Yep. Going to be a big cold change. Mount Martha rocks. The snapper will come in. Even though it's 13 degrees air temperature, the bay is still at least 19, if not 20 in most places. And the snapper are on fire. It's a great yep. temperature for them. They're coming close. Yep. Mount Martha Yeah, this will be the last little hurrah before they leave. That's yeah. it. Yep. If you want to get uh, out of the wind a bit in Western Port, Crib Point. Either launch at Hastings or Stony Point and get to Crib Point. Crib. Right along that coast there, in close. Lovely, excuse me, King George Whiting. If you don't want to go very far from the boat ramp and catch a whiting, yeah. incoming tide, I reckon, is the best. Warnake Channel. Just sit in there, get some lovely King George whiting. Get as close to the entrance as you can. And uh, if you want to head offshore, if there's an opportunity, Barwon Heads, yep. Southern Bluefin Tuna. Absolutely on fire. Going to trolleys at Geelong, those that's boys right. would know everything that's going on at Barwon. They know to rig up. And Barwon River, there's a few elephant fish being caught. Oh, Is stop it. Really yep. Yeah, you no get way. that around yeah, this time about this time of year, about the next yeah. four or five weeks. And I, even though there hasn't been a lot of rain, a little bit of rain helps, but the Hauka River is lucky last. Mm. Brown trout, some fantastic brown trout in the Hauka River. Lovely place to go. Yeah. If you want to fly fish, you'll need a uh, cane creel and a, uh, one of those plated hats. <laughs> if you want to drift Get a scrub. Sheep yard yeah. flat. I mean, yeah. people will be going away looking and for wild fish next week. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. 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 So that's good. Um, don't forget, if you want to see all the... Oh, sorry, if you want to see, if you want to hear all the up-to-date reports and talk to some of the, the best charter guys in the business, 3mp.com.au, pick up our Talking Fishing on 3MP podcast every Friday morning. I think we might even have a promo. 3mp.com.au, every Friday morning you get the podcast of Talking Fishing on 3MP. Um, Sally, th these have been fantastic. I'm glad you've enjoyed them. Um, how long have you been in Apollo Bay? 
27 years. Yeah, wow. Took you that long to make a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Dale, yeah, you've been down there. Show. You have the <laughs> festival every year, don't you? do, yeah, yeah. Every. It's a big festival. You know, it's huge, yeah. isn't it? So. Oh, it's a massive. Is it a big fishing town? The, yes, yep. Lots, mm. of, lots of commercial fishermen down there. Great, co-op great there fishing. Is, yeah, the yep. co-op's a, a great place to be as well. Yeah. You know, fresh yep. seafood. So you can buy there. your fish from down the yeah, co-op. you can. And Plenty and of accommodation? Uh, there is. Lots of accommodation, lots of... Uh, Great uh, caravan parks and um, motels and things, lots of Airbnb, mm. so it's a fabulous mm. place to stay. Mm. Oh, lots, to, lots to do, not only just the fishing down there, which is fantastic, surfing, diving for abalone and crayfish, and yep. there's a lot of things mm. to do for the tourists as well in the national park, yeah. with beautiful rainforest walks and waterfalls, yep. so it's you've a great place pretty, to be. It's a pretty place, yeah, I like, mm. it's, great, it's a great place, yeah. Mm. Yep. You've been down there, Ed? I, have, I haven't been to Apollo Bay, but uh. remember it put on the fishing map when those barrel tuna turned up yeah, a little while right. ago now, but they had that <coughs> big run of red bait. There was that reef that was... That's quite a big, fair big distance, reef. isn't it? The but Henty Reef. Yeah, yeah. big reef. Yeah. Big reef. And there big was... Reef, yeah. uh, oh, what do you call it? Something? The Henty Reef. The Henty Reef. Yeah. There you go. Mm. Yeah. It's good. That was, yeah. That'd be nice. Uh, lovely part of the yeah. world. Mm. I look Let's forward to seeing you all down. Yeah, I must come yeah. down for yeah. a fresh yeah. 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 Try a scallop pie baked in the, in in the, pie. Yeah. on the That's pie right. warmer yeah. instead of the microwave. Yeah. So, but fantastic. And I'm no, still down the morning now. Yep. Yeah. No, I'm <laughs> definitely going to thank you. You've driven all the way up from Apollo Bay today and we really appreciate the effort and... I'm sure your phone's running hot and people are going to be asking for <laughs> Yeah, you have to make 700 kind of scholar pies tomorrow, not 350. Thank you for having me on and, and yeah. you know, pr- promoting the scholar pies. It's been yeah, fantastic. Been really great. appreciate it. Dale, thanks for coming in once again. Thank you, Dale. Great show, great information, and um, keep kicking goals at fisheries because it's it's a great thing, and Thank Victoria you. is very, very lucky for yeah. it. So uh, that's it for Talking Fishing. Hope you enjoyed the show. Next week, we are joined by a couple of the women in recreational fishing leaders to chat all things fishing. Looks like some pretty ordinary weather coming our way, as we said, 13 degrees on Sunday uh, this, this weekend. So just check your weather before heading out on the water. Until we see you again next Tuesday on Talking Fishing, Please stay safe on the water and enjoy your fishing. Talking fishing, talking fishing, nothing but fishing, we're talking fishing. We got all you need, just take a look. Watch those fish jump on your hook. So just relax and take your time. Enjoy the show, then drop us a line. Talking fishing, talking fishing, nothing but fishing, we're talking fishing. Talking fishing, talking fishing, nothing but fishing, we're talking fishing. Talking fishing. Have a good weekend, Mr. Walker. You too, son.